Hello everyone, so what am I doing here? Well, I'm going to show you. Arriving from Chaos Central at around 7 a.m. Walking from Exit B of Museum Nagara Station, you'll find Jalan Travers and the titular Museum Nagara. We'll walk this way and through this tunnel underneath Jalan Damansara. Welcome to the Perdana Botanical Gardens, or Lake Gardens. For the purposes of the video, I'll be referring to it by Lake Gardens for ease and explain how accessible the gardens were throughout time. I love the Lake Gardens. It's green, big and peaceful. I get to sip fresh air and look at how amazing it was. Just look at it! It's awesome that the air is much cooler here in the morning as the trees create a cooler microclimate as it is just pleasing to walk around here. The park is old. It was founded in 1888 by the Salango treasurer at the time, Alfred Venning, and was approved by the British resident Frank Swettenham. Venning laid plans for the park, including the lake, which the name Lake Gardens got its name from. There are many attractions within the gardens, including the namesake lake, Perdana Lake, an amphitheater, a herbarium, the Tun Abdul Raza Memorial, and a national planetarium. Adjacent to the gardens is the Parliament Building, built in 1963, as shown in this photo. Walking along Jalan Parliament, here it is 60 years later, and interesting things happen inside. Opposite the road is Tugunagara, or the National Monument, built to commemorate the soldiers who fought in the World Wars and the Malayan Emergency, known for its cenotaph, and a sculpture created by the same person behind the Marine Corps War Memorial in Arlington County, Virginia. The park is fun, but how has its accessibility been going though? This map shows Kuala Lumpur in 1936. The area of the gardens, known as the Public Gardens, is around this area, and both Damansara Road and Travers Road can be seen together. This old photo in the 60s shows how accessible one can travel to the gardens from the museum by the simple walkway. But then, Damansara Road became too congested, so an urban highway was built, called the System Penyurayan Traffic KL Badan, or the Sprit Expressway, upgrading the road to become the Damansara Link. How different is it to cross it now? This is Jalan Damansara today, reconstructed to accommodate high speeds. Accessibility is limited to this tunnel shown before, and this elevated walkway to the museum. At least there is some great separation. But crossing Jalan Travers is a bit tough. Also reconstructed for high speeds, people now need to cross an underpass and get charged 80 cents, which could have been better if people who want to cross the other side have a dedicated way without sharing it with those who want to use the Kajang line. And the noise levels are different. Compare the sounds within the gardens with Jalan Travers. There's a difference, right? And this junction to cross Jalan Parliament to Tugunagara is no good either. The footpath is narrowed to those on foot, so strollers and wheelchairs aren't able to access it. The pedestrian signal is always given last priority, and sometimes motorcyclists occupy the crossing for an easy turn to the right to Jalan Chandrawase. Again, strollers aren't going to have it easy, and cycle lanes don't exist. People often complain that the city is noisy, but it is due to speeding cars. And in Kuala Lumpur, personal vehicles are given higher priority, at the expense of other road users, but speed first, safety later. It wasn't this way, and it shouldn't be, so here's what we can do. We can... Limit the speed at roads like Jalan Parliament to give priority to pedestrians, like giving more signal priority to pedestrians, capping the speed limit to 30 km per hour so that drivers have more time to react, upgrade the junction to accommodate strollers and wheelchairs, add bus or cycle lanes, and get rid of these slip lanes because drivers can turn without them, just a bit slower. We can also just not build new highways, because building new highways just contribute more issues. Fighting road traffic with more roads isn't going to work, because over time, new drivers will fill that new demand. This phenomenon is known as induced demand. Did the Sprint Expressway work to combat congestion in Jalan Damansara? It did, 
that directs that traffic to adjacent Mount Kiara and Bandar Taba. Even if the Kajang Line was built, most still drive because walkability to stations are often blocked by walls despite being so close to it, where footpaths or cycle lanes don't exist. Overall, building new highways does not solve congestion. By giving more priority to public transit than to cars, addressing connectivity problems to the stations, congestion will reduce in the long run. Despite complaints by drivers that doing so will cause traffic to increase in adjacent areas, it depends on road design that will impact the traffic flow. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more content in the future, which I would make, then go subscribe to my channel, CBD, and subscribe to my other channel where I make animated videos. I'll end this video by making pigeon sounds. With the pigeons. <laughs> pigeons. Oh, 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 oh.